this tutorial, I'll show you how to do a laser write-on effect using BCC Laser Beam in After Effects. Hi, here I am in After Effects, and this is the finished product you see here. A laser write-on effect etching this character. Why? I don't know, it's a question mark. <laughs> um, but I'm using the new BCC Laser Beam filter, which is one of my favorite new filters in BCC 9. And this is one of my favorite things to do with it. So this is just going to show you how to set up this kind of thing. In another tutorial, I'll get more technical and do something even more impressive with it. But for now, this is what I'm going to show you how to do. Okay, so let's start in a relatively new comp. I'm using a uh, text character as my motion path. So to do that, I have to go to Layer and say Create Masks from Text. This will actually give me spline paths that outline my text character there. And so now we can get started. So create a new AE light, make sure it's a spotlight, and a new AE camera. Any size will do. Finally, a new AE solid to which we will apply the laser beam. I've even made it that laser red color that is on the warning labels of most laser beams. All right, so here we go. Let's apply laser beam directly to the solid. Here you can see the default setting, just kind of a laser floating in space. And what we're going to do is change the camera to be comp and change the light source to be comp. Now the AE light is driving the laser beam effect and that's exactly what we want. So at this point, if we change the color of the light, we will change the color of the laser beam. And there you go. But in addition to that, you also have controls in the laser beam itself for how the color looks. So if you turn down comp light, so you have this glow amount here, which you can adjust. Turning it down sort of reduces the intensity. You can even change the color of the core of the beam. So if I make that like a red, you can get different results that way too. Right, but I like keeping it pretty much white. And here we will probably change the intensity uh, later as our motion gets more set up. So speaking of which, let's do that. Let's set up the motion of the laser beam. Going into two views, you can move your light easier in 3D space. You might want to have it coming from directly in back of the camera or maybe off to the side. Um, I'm going to do a little off to the side and a little above the camera. So let's do that by manipulating the slider here for position. Like so. Looks good. Maybe a little higher even. The further away the uh, light source is, the more consistent the thickness of the beam will appear. But speaking of beam thickness, you can actually change manually the start and end width right here. And I am going to do that. I'm going to make it a lot thinner. And you see how it has kind of a rounded tip? Uh, that is the tip sharpness. For this effect, I like to bring that down to just about zero. And there's a little bit of a you know compositing thing there. So let's change the blend mode of this whole layer to be screen. Nice. OK, so that's about right. And it looks like it's hitting the object. Um, if it doesn't, you can change the length here uh, to anything you want. And if that isn't good enough for you, check this out. You can use a target layer. So for example, let's make the outlines a 3D layer in After Effects. Going back into the laser, so use target layer. And setting that outlines track as the target, the laser beam will automatically hit it. So if I rotate around in 3D space, you can see that it's always going to hit that layer. It's a very useful feature and perfect for this kind of write-on effect. All right, so we have the length correct. We have the color more or less what we want. Now let's do that motion path I was talking about. So what you want to do, this is a cool trick in AE. You can actually copy a mask path, so Control C or Apple C, and then paste it into the position of another parameter. Um, so you don't want position, actually. You want the point of interest. So A to reveal the point of interest in the light, and then Control or Apple V to get those keyframes. And there it is. It's automatically created these row of keyframes that track the path. It's really cool. And if you want to adjust the timing, just grab one end and scrub it wherever you need. So that's the first path. Now let's do the second one. Same thing. Just go forward a bit. Paste again. Make this one a little bit shorter because it's just 
that circle. Nice. And if you want to change the timing of the whole thing, select them all, and then Alt-click on one of the ends, and that will proportionately scale all the keyframes. Uh, one thing I should point out, though, when you paste in one of those paths, make sure you are not on top of any existing keyframes or your results will be kind of weird. Okay, but that looks good. And when the write-on finishes, we want the laser beam to go away. So there's a lot of ways we could do that. We could just kill the light track there and then it would disappear. Or maybe just make the laser beam shrink back to its source. Now here's another fun little trick. You can animate this use target layer checkbox. So go down a frame, turn that off. Now it's going to use the length. And of course you can animate the length, so just make it shrink back into its source beam or to the lightsaber handle, wherever it came from. And there you go. So you can have it both ways, target layer and length. I love that. All right, now the beam is just kind of there. Let's make it a little snazzier. Let's add a light strobe effect. So light strobe at default, makes the beam disappear completely, which is cool, but I don't want that for this. So turn the amount down to like 30. Uh, speed, 100 is very fast, so I'll bring that down to like 60. And random means it doesn't flicker constantly. So if I set that to zero, it would constantly flicker. 100 means there's a lot of gaps in it. So I'm gonna go in between and do 50 there, and that'll give me like a nice vibrating kind of laser. Maybe increase the amount a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. A couple other things we can change here. Let us add some motion blur. So depending on your shutter angle, you might get a lot of different beams or just a little bit. And if you turn up the samples and the intensity, you can really get kind of a lightsaber look looking right on. Um, but that's not what I want for this. I want to do just like a strobe effect. So I'm actually going to turn the samples down to like four and that will give me just enough of a kind of ghosting on the light to look cool. And lastly, let's add some smoke. So this will be like an atmospheric element. It's a little strong in the default settings, so turn the density down. It also, uh, the smoke is obviously white, so if you find you want to increase the intensity of your color again, you can go into comp light and adjust the outside glow amount. Okay, so we're pretty much done. Um, there's only a couple other things to do left. Of course, we want to write on the character. So that is done using the AE stroke effect. And maybe you already know how to do this, but just in case you don't, I will show you. So apply stroke to a new layer. You want to copy those same paths you had earlier onto the stroke path and set the paint style to on transparent. Increase the brush size oh, and tell it to use all masks, of course. All right, so increase the brush size so you can see it. Uh, again, you can change the color to be something cool. Let's do yellow, I guess. And what we want to do is animate this end percent so that it follows the laser beam. So a good idea to do that is to expose the point of interest frames again, going back into stroke and animating the end so it times up with these keyframes. So we know that it has to finish right there, so we'll make that 100. And if you see something like this where it's doing the wrong path first, you can just reorder your paths and it should time up like so. Okay, now going straight to 100 didn't perfectly match. That's because these are Rove keyframes. They do kind of their own timing. Um, so we're gonna force it to be finished here using control to get smoother control in the slider. And that should now match up perfectly, and it does. Just gonna turn the hardness down to zero. Looks a little better. And now that we have uh, this draw on effect, we don't wanna see the outlines anymore, so just hide them. And there's that. And of course, the stroke should probably go under the laser. One final touch you should add is to put some sort of effect where the laser beam hits the right on. And there's a number of different ways to do that. The fastest way is probably just a simple lens flare. 
So I'm going to use the BCC Lens Flare 3D, another one of my favorite filters. And again, just take those keyframes from the point of interest. And because they are position keyframes, I can actually just directly paste them into the position of the lens flare. So again, created a keyframe to show the track in the timeline, but I'm going to delete it and paste those keyframes in. And there we go. So the laser right on effect using the BCC laser beam filter in After Effects in just a few minutes. So if you liked what you saw here and want to do more with this filter, check out my other tutorial. Or if you want to see what BCC9 has to offer, go to our website and download a free trial version. And that's at BorisFX.com.